This video is on rotations. The definition is a rotation is a transformation in which a figure turns around a fixed center point by a given angle. And you'll notice each of those parts of the definition have their own terms. The fixed center point is the point of rotation, also called the center of rotation. We can use either of those terms. And the angle that you rotate it by is called the angle of rotation. Also remember, the rotations are the fourth type of transformation that we'll be studying. Uh, we've already done which other three transformations? Hopefully you said dilations, translations, and reflections. Uh, rotations are like translations and reflections in that the image, the resulting picture, will be congruent to the original figure. It'll just be turned in a different direction. Now, when you're thinking about rotations, you need to realize that the point of rotation can be located in three different places. It could be outside the original figure. Uh, often when that happens, uh, the point of rotation is the origin on a coordinate plane, but not always. Here's an example of a rotation done around a center of rotation that is outside the original figure. If we were to measure this angle, that would tell us the angle of rotation. And when I do that, it looks like the angle of rotation is approximately 60 degrees. Our point of rotation can be actually on the original, uh, in which case it is usually one of the vertices of the original picture. So that would look like that. If you see in both of these rotations, the original and the image are connected at a single vertex, and that vertex is the point of rotation. Or, the point of rotation can be inside the original, and that is where basically you're kind of putting your finger in the middle of the shape and spinning it around on top of itself. So, that might look like this. This point right here is our uh, center of rotation, the red outline in the background was the original, and they have rotated it this way to create this image, one on top of the other. Just a side note here that just because an original figure and its image have some overlap does not necessarily mean the point of rotation is within the figure. This shows a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation, and there does happen to be a little bit of overlap here, um, but I think you can tell that because point D has moved so much, because point A and B and C have moved so much, I think you can still tell that the point of rotation is outside the shape. As we continue on on these notes, you might want to get a piece of graph paper so that you'll be able to more accurately draw some of the uh, examples and rotations that we'll be looking at. In this example, all of the uh, rotations have already been drawn for us. Here in the upper left-hand corner is the original figure. Uh, it's also sometimes called the pre-image uh, because we know that the resulting figures after transformations are called images. Um, our first image is here, x prime, y prime, z prime. Can you tell what angle of rotation has been applied from x, y, z to x prime, y prime, z prime? Uh, if it's not readily obvious, the way that you would measure is to pick a pair of corresponding points. So maybe I'm going to pick point Z. And it might help if I connect point Z to my center of, or, of rotation, which in this case is at the origin, and then connect that origin out to the image Z, so Z prime out here. And when I do that, and if I measure that angle, this line would extend up to 90 degrees. Oh, you can't see that. This uh, orange line would extend up to 90 degrees because this is a 90 degree angle. Besides naming the angle, you should also describe the direction of the rotation. This is a 90 degree, 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. Uh, for some reason with rotations, we seem to always go counterclockwise. Now when I compare this original to x double prime, y double prime, z double prime, that's how you say it when it has the two little hash marks because it's the second copy. Um, if we were to connect a pair of corresponding points again to the image, maybe this time in blue, let's say that I connect 
x to the origin and then origin to x double prime. Well, that basically makes a straight line, so we know that's going to be a 180 degree rotation. And while it doesn't matter with 180 degrees, we would probably call this 180 degrees counterclockwise rotation, but even if we went clockwise, we would still end up in the same location. Uh, last, let's take a look at what happens if I measure between my original and x triple prime, y triple prime, z triple prime here. Let's see, I've already used x, I've already used z, that leaves me with y. So y to the origin, y triple prime to the origin. And when we measure that angle, center it up there on the origin, this line would continue and would get you to 90 degrees again. The difference is, instead of calling this a 90 degree clockwise rotation, you will more often see it as a 270 degrees counterclockwise rotation. Don't ask me why, but we know that those mean the same thing. 90 degrees clockwise or 270 degrees counterclockwise, we know that gets us the full circle of 360, so that means the same thing. So here I've got triangle RST, and I want to look at creating uh, some rotations of this triangle. Uh, there are a few shortcuts that I can teach you to make this a little bit easier without having to grab your protractor and keep marking off 90 degree and 180 degree angles and figure out where the point goes, because besides just being at a certain angle from the origin in this case, which is again going to be our center of rotation, it would also have to be the same distance, so I'd have to measure the distance from the origin to R and then make a 90 degree angle going counterclockwise and go out that same distance distance away from O uh, in that direction, and that can be kind of time consuming. Um, so there are a couple of shortcuts that I can teach you about how to make rotations easier. Uh, notice the first thing that we're going to do is make a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation, right? And so if I'm going counterclockwise, I'm going to be moving this direction, and it's going to end up over here in quadrant four. Um, instead of trying to refigure all of that out, I can actually just turn my paper and this is going to sound strange, but in the opposite way. So I'm going to turn my paper clockwise so that now this quadrant four is where quadrant three used to be, right? In the bottom left-hand corner. And we're going to kind of temporarily ignore these axes, and we're going to put the points in the same place on our rotated grid. So point R is at the coordinates negative two, negative one. So when I rotate my paper, I'm going to pretend like this is the correct direction, and I'm going to go to negative 2, negative 1. I'm going to go two spaces to the left and one space down, and that's where R prime is going to go. Now, point S is at 0, negative 4. So again, when I rotate my paper, 0, negative 4 means I go left or right 0, and I just go down four spaces. Notice this is not actually at a negative 4. But in my rotated version of this coordinate plane, it totally is. Last, this is a letter T. Letter T is at negative 4, negative 7. So in my rotated plane, I would go 4 to the left and 7 down. And that is where T prime is going to be. And when I connect my points, and I'm doing it quickly without a straight edge, so my lines did not get perfectly straight, but take a look. I've made a rotation of RST 90 degrees, right? Uh, I can do the same thing for 180 degrees, which is what this third part is asking me. So take RST, and if I want to rotate it 180 degrees counterclockwise, uh, then right, basically it would be, again, turn your paper the opposite direction. So since I want it to move counterclockwise, Right? I'm actually going to turn my paper clockwise to where now that quadrant is in the lower left-hand corner where our original drawing was. Remember, our original drawing was in quadrant three, so now we're putting our quadrant where we're drawing down in that bottom left-hand corner. So R was at negative two, negative one. So I go two to the left and down one. Oops, let me change color. 
I go two to the left and down one for our double prime. Uh, S was at zero, negative four, so I go left or right zero and down four, and there is S double prime. And T was at negative four, negative seven, so four to the left and seven down, there is T double prime. So turn it back the right way, check it. So far, I'm doing a pretty good, pretty good job with all of my rotations. Now, it doesn't mention a 270 degree rotation here, but we could repeat the process and draw our final triangle uh, image up there in quadrant two by repeating the same process. The second shortcut I can show you uh, is based off of some observations we can make off of those rotations we just drew. I've gone ahead and I've written down all of the coordinates for our original triangle RST, and actually I should probably mark that with a little triangle symbol, um, as well as our images under 90 degree and 180 degree rotation. Um, when we look, let's first compare the original to the 90 degree rotation that we drew first. If you look at the coordinates for the corresponding vertices, you start to notice numbers are being repeated, although maybe rearranged a little bit uh, and some other changes happening. What we want to do is be able to write a rule that shows that if we start with some coordinate x, y, whatever those numbers are, what do we have to do to those numbers to create the coordinate for an image of that point under a 90 degree rotation? Uh, it may be easiest to see what's happening just by looking at s and s prime. Compare the coordinates 0, negative 4 with 4, 0. Well, first of all, the 0 and the 4 have swapped places. So do we see that happening with all of our other numbers? Yeah, the digits are swapping places. So instead of x, y, now the y has moved up front. The x has moved in the back. Is that the only thing that's happened? No, we can see that suddenly there aren't as many negatives over here under our uh, image than there were originally. And if we start to compare, well, that original x value, whatever it was, seems to stay the same. However, that original y value now suddenly has become the opposite. So how do I show that? I put a negative sign out in front. Remember, that's another way of saying the opposite of y. It doesn't necessarily make it negative, it takes it and makes it the opposite. So the opposite of negative one became positive one. And that's what happened to all of the y coordinates. So another way I can create a 90 degree rotation image is to apply this rule to a set of coordinates and then I will know where to plot the points for the image. Let's take a look at the 180 degree rotation. I know you have to look all the way across the table, but this time actually I think it's a little bit easier to see what's happening with these numbers. They're all becoming the opposites. Nothing's getting rearranged. It stays in the same order. So x is still in front, y is still in back. And again, remember we're referring to the original x, y. But now they've all become the opposites. So I need to say opposite of x and opposite of y. So I can apply these rules to a set of original coordinates, and that will tell me where I need to go with my new images. Let's try that here with rectangle twin. I'm actually going to zoom in. So in order to create a 90 degree rotation, I'm going to take a look at these coordinates. Let's come up here, and actually I can use my background to remind us of those rules. So here is the 90 degree rotation. I want to swap the order of the coordinates and make the y coordinate become the opposite when it moves up to its front. So since t was at 2, 1, then t prime, remember I'm going to swap the order, and what used to be the y is going to become the opposite. w prime, I'm going to swap the order, and what used to be the y coordinate is now going to become the opposite. i prime, again, swaps the order. Not that that matters in this case since they're the same number, but what used to be the y coordinate becomes the opposite. n prime, swap the order. What used to become uh, 
uh, what used to be the y coordinate now becomes the opposite. So that is where I'm going to plot my points. And let's take a look. I'm going to move this up here for a second. So negative 1, 2, that is where t prime goes. Negative 3, 6, there is w prime. Negative 5, 5, i prime. And negative 3, 1, n prime. And I look, that does appear to be a 90 degree rotation, and it has gone counterclockwise. Uh, as you're due now, I want you to try to write the coordinates for the 180 degree rotation that you would make. Remember, go back to the original rectangle's coordinates and apply your rule. So let's see how you did. So T double prime, right, because now this is our second image. I'm going to go back to my original coordinates and just make everything the opposite. Negative 2, negative 1. Negative 6, negative 3. Negative 5, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 3. So once I plot these coordinates, that should give me my 180 degree rotation. And there you go. In class, we'll play with the 270 degree uh, counterclockwise rotation, and we'll figure out what the rule is to create that image.